everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a recent and currently reading video. It's been a while since I checked in with my uh, what I'm currently reading and what I've just finished. Um, and I haven't finished all that much since the last time I checked in with you guys. But uh, it is getting on to the end of the month. It's March 30th as I'm filming this, so I just kind of wanted to... I don't think I'll probably finish anything else before the end of the month. Um, maybe I will, but it's doubtful uh, with how scattered I have been lately with my reading. But I've read three really great books, and I wanted to just talk about them quickly. So the first thing I've finished uh, since the last time I checked in is SPQ SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome with by Mary Beard. Nonfiction, just what it says on the tin. I body read this with Britta Bowler. This is an excellent book. Um, we did this in such a great way. We read a chapter and talked about it every two days. And the chapters were about 30 to 35 pages long for the most part. And that was a perfect pace to read this book because it is, uh, you know, it's really filled with a lot of information. This covers the time period um, of the early part of the Roman Empire. So like the first few hundred years, um, so this goes from like maybe two or three hundred BC and then um, the next couple hundred years after the birth of Christ or whatever we're using for our division there. But so like to one or two hundred um, AD, which she uses a different uh, designation, but I can never remember what it is, and I only ever remember BC and AD, so <laughs> you just have to bear with me on that one. So it takes, it covers about 500 years. Anyway, early Roman Republic to the first 200 years, basically, of the Roman Empire. Um, so, you know, Julius Caesar, um, Marcus, a Mark Antony, Cleopatra, all of that kind of stuff, and we picked this book up because we had read Cleopatra, um, previously and we wanted to read more about that time frame and I'm so glad we did because this is was really uh, highly informative and entertaining and even during all of the you know stuff that's happening in the world with the pandemic and everything we were able to stay focused on this and have really good discussions about all the things um, that were in here which is truly fascinating um, not only this covers a lot of how the government worked and how, um, you know, this was the first time, this is like basically early democracy, although you, you know, it's not really democracy as we know it, but this first time that people voted on things and the, you know, first sort of governing body, um, the Senate, which is the first time that sort of, uh, structure was used and all that, that was fascinating. But there's also these chapters interwoven that talk about like basic life and, you know, what Roman life was like, the fact that they had, you know, they, in, in the early part of the Roman Empire, they had buildings with central heat. My mind was blown. I mean, some of the technology they were able to bring to bear in their culture and in their civilization, fascinating. I mean, they basically went from a tiny village to this metropolis and with accompanying um, civilized aspects of life. I mean, fascinating stuff. Highly recommend this book um, if you're inter interested in that sort of thing. The next thing I finished was a book for middle grade March and that is One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. I talked about this a little bit on my vlog um, last weekend and uh, I didn't know if I was going to like it. The mom was really kind of bugging me because the mom has left her three daughters when they were very young children with their dad in New York and has moved to California where she lives on her own and she's heavily involved in the Black Panther movement. And uh, one summer uh, it is decided that the three girls are going to go out and spend the summer with their mom, spend a month with her out in, I believe, Oakland. Yeah, Oakland, California, 1968. And when the girls get there, the mom really doesn't seem to be that excited that they're there. She's not interested in changing her lifestyle to be a mom to these three girls. And so she kind of just sends them off to this day camp situation that the Black Panthers are putting on for kids. Um, but as the story goes on, of course, it becomes more and more clear what, you know, what's the history? What's the mom's history? What's the history of... Um, her parent, the parents' relationship, and the girls also get 
uh, their first taste of independence and their first taste of what it's like to sort of be able to make their own decisions and to decide for themselves what they believe about um, freedom and um, being a black American and all that stuff. And it's really, really good. And the end was awesome. I, I was delighted by the ending of this book. Uh, and so I can't recommend this one highly enough. If you're looking for a middle grade read that tackles um, civil rights and just shows uh, what how families are all different and, you know, there is no one right way to make a family, uh, this book is excellent. I then finished yesterday this book, Shark Grunk, The Art of Catching a Large Shark from a Tiny, rub tiny Rubber Dinghy in a Big Ocean by Morten Stroksnes. This is translated from the Norwegian by Tina Nunnally. And this is a nonfiction book, just about what it says on the cover. I buddy read this with Doris. It was delightful. I really love nature rating. A, I really love nature rating about the ocean and marine life. So that tick. Um, and this book is, it is a little bit ridiculous. These two guys decide they're going to go out in this rubber dinghy to try to catch the Greenland shark, which is this humongous fish, right? And not only are they doing it out of a rubber boat, they're doing it like low technology with first they try hand line and then they also try fishing rod. Um, so all the while you're fascinated by this, you're also going, why, why would you do this? You're, you're silly <laughs> for doing this. But while you're getting that story, the author is also weaving in Norwegian myths and legends and folklore. He's weaving in facts about um, fishing and oceanography and marine life in the Arctic. Um, and he describes the ocean in its many um, phases so well. This book is broken up into four seasons. So they try catching the shark in all four seasons. And the way that the author describes how the sea looks in each of the seasons, fantastic. I live on the ocean, as you guys know, in Maine. I work in marine resources um, and he does such a good job of capturing what it's like to be on the water in different um, weather, in different seasons. I just loved it. So if you like nature writing, if you like um, basically nature not in fiction that weaves in lots of topics um, and historical information about a place, this one is a book for you. Really, really great read and Doris and I very much enjoyed our buddy read together. Now, I've been really scattered, as I've said, so I haven't been very productive in my reading, but I, I did pick up um, on Friday and have read 100 pages of a book that I'd read already once before. This is Pandemic by Sonia Shah. And I read this book several years ago. It's on my um, top 50 nonfiction list. And I was just feeling like I needed a refresher in the science. I am a person who likes the facts and I like to base my information on factual stuff and I just feel like there's so much mis misinformation out there in this pandemic right now with the coronavirus and it frustrates the heck out of me. Um, and so I figured I'd go back to a nonfiction book that I really enjoyed that talked about pandemics and this book is excellent. It The author takes um, uh, excuse me, cholera, thank you, blanked because I was thinking coronavirus. She takes the um, story of uh, cholera and uses that as the lens to talk about how we, um, as, a, as a world society, deal with pandemics today. Um, so she uses coronavirus as that, I mean, excuse me, she uses cholera as that lens. So you get a lot of information about cholera, but you also are getting information all the while about what we've learned from cholera and what we have not um, evidently decided to use for information with, that we've learned from cholera about how to deal with pandemics in a global society. Um, so like each chapter deals with a different aspect. It deals about how um, viruses jump from 
animals to humans. It talks about how um, viruses can spread um, due to uh, advancements in, in transportation and technology um, and how our economy works nowadays. Um, it talks about uh, medical advancements and how we've learned how to contain contagion and how we've not applied those lessons learned in certain cases. So if you're looking for facts about pandemics and how they work and how viruses work, um, this book is really excellent. And she's not a fear monger at all. This book is not designed to freak you out. This book is designed to give you actually I'm finding it, it's giving me a lot of hope about what we already know about um, viruses and bacterias and other contagions that spread, uh, um, that are contagious and spread. Um, I'm finding it gives me a lot of hope because if I know the facts, I feel like I have a better handle on things. So definitely recommend this book if you have not already read it and if you feel you can handle it at this particular time. I mean, I totally understand if this is not something you're interested in reading at the present time, but if you like me, like to um, basically calm yourself down with facts, this one um, is a good one. And then also, I am weird. <laughs> I wanted to pick up The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Mom, which is fiction that takes place in the 1920s. Kitty is a uh, person who only cares about society and um, social life and dresses and all of that stuff. And she's sort of enjoying um, life as a single young woman in England, but all of a sudden her sister, her younger sister, her plain younger sister, um, is getting married and Kitty is not, has not yet accepted a proposal and God forbid her younger sister get married before she does. So she accepts the first proposal that comes along to a man, um, I don't remember his name, uh, and it doesn't really matter. She marries this man who is a, uh, he is a scientist a scientist who works in Hong Kong for the British government. He actually deals with um, epidemics and she goes to Hong Kong with him and promptly um, launches herself into an affair and her husband finds out and then he decides he's going to take her into the hinterland of China um, to deal with a cholera epidemic that has broken out. And you kind of are getting the feeling that he's hoping she dies while they're out there. This book is so atmospheric. Like Kitty is uh, just, she makes you roll your eyes right out of your head because she's so foolish about some of the things that she does. And she's only interested in her own amusements and her own pleasure. And you don't really know what the husband's deal is. Like he, she, Kitty thinks that she, he is like just totally in love with her. But as the story unfolds, you're beginning to realize there's something not quite right with the old husband. And so I'm just in the part where he's, the husband's figured out Kitty's having an affair and he's just announced to her that she's going to accompany him out into the wil the wilds of China um, to deal with this cholera epidemic. So it's very atmospheric and very creepy and very engaging. So very much enjoying that one. And then uh, I believe I mentioned in um, my vlog as well that I had picked up Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is a contemporary fiction book, um, which is about a young woman named Casey. She is a police officer in Philadelphia and she patrols a basically a rundown neighborhood. I guess you would call it a ghetto. Um, where there's a lot of crime and a lot of drugs and there's an opioid epidemic going on. And um, Casey has a sister who struggles with addiction and Casey's sister has gone missing. And now Casey is trying to sort of utilize her contacts um, as a police officer to try to figure out what's happened to her sister. And this one's really good as well, but for some reason I just have not been able to settle to it. Every time I pick it up and read it, I am engaged and I am like halfway through it, but I just, for whatever reason right now, my with my brain being scattered the way it is, it just isn't one that uh, I feel a calling to pick up when, I, when I've set it down. So I think it's suffered from my brain um, not being focused uh, and it's not anything to do with the quality of this book, which I think is very good. 
Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get myself back into that one soon. So that is what I've recently read and what I'm currently reading. I hope that you have all found some good books to read where you are. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and not going um, stir crazy as we all stay at home in these days of the pandemic. I am, you know, I just feel so much uh, wishing I could make everything better for everyone all the time. And um, I certainly send those thoughts to you wherever you are. I hope you all remain well, and I will talk to you later.